your history Buildings and people and memories and dreams Who better to tell us than those who were there There's so much to learn from the stories they'll share Living history Hello and welcome to another program of Living History with Ted Goldsboro and today's guest, Ed Lewis. Ed lives in Gladwin, but today we're going to find out about his grandfather named Theobald Harsh. And Mr. Lewis, would you tell me about Mr. Harsh? Well, Ted, it's, it's Ed. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. No, um, no, Theobald Harsh was my grandfather, but I never knew him because he died in 1909. Um, but I've put it together over the years, things that my mother told me about him and researching in history. And um, so I can tell you, he was um, part of the history of Narbeth. And he was born in a little town called Nerdingham in, in South Germany, in Württemberg, in 1861. Um, now, Württemberg, at that time was a, an independent um, province, but after the Franco-Prussian Wars, it became part of um, the Prussian Germany. And when the militaristic um, Prussians came in, they um, instituted co uh, universal conscription. And my grandfather, at, at age 17, did not want to go into a Prussian army, so on a bright, sunny, Sunday morning while his family were in church, he skipped out and he walked all the way south into Italy, into the Tyrol, and he... Um, about how many miles would that be? In? About a hundred? About a hundred miles, I would guess. Yeah, but over the mountains, over the Alps. Where is he sleeping? Where is he getting well, food? Well, he must have slept by the roadside. <laughs> Um, I don't know that part of the story, okay. but uh, I mean, what I do know is how my mother always told me this story and how he must have told her. But um, after a winter with an Italian family, he walked then all the way to Vienna, which could be another two or three hundred miles. And he walked barefoot to save his shoe leather so that when he got to the big imperial capital of Vienna, he had shoes to wear. <laughs> and, um, you know, as in, the, in the early 1880s, Vienna was the cultural and economic capital of the big Austro-Hungarian empire. And um, uh, the Emperor Franz Joseph had the, the old uh, Habsburg palace called Schönbrunn. And my grandfather went there and got a job as a gardener. Now, the Emperor Franz Joseph was very interested in horticulture, and he had built um, great um, greenhouses and had um, botanical collections of uh, you know trees and plants from mm -hmm. all over the, the planet. Mm -hmm. And in that climate, my father, my grandfather, learned the art of landscaping and horticulture. Do we um, have a picture of that? Did, of the, we, did yes. we get that off of the internet? Or? Yes, we do. There's okay. a, a picture of this um, great gra glass greenhouse, and you get a sense of the kind of gardens that were, were there. Okay. Um, and the, the Empress, um, his, his wife, I can't her, Cece, was a, an equestrian. She loved horses, oh. and she rode. And so, on. so the stables of the palace were mm. well stocked with these beautiful um, liposani. Mm. They, and mm. so, in that climate, he also learned um, horsemanship. Mm -hmm. And so but by the time he was 21, he saved up enough money so he could go to his dream of coming to America. Mm. Mm. And um, he b sent a letter to his mother to meet him at Bremerhaven, where he b boarded a ship. Mm -hmm. And she came and bid him goodbye mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 
-hmm. He never saw her. Mm -hmm. They never saw each other again. After he ran away from home, did he correspond with the family? Oh, he, he probably did. But, okay. you know, he couldn't go back into Germany mm -hmm. or he'd be mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. arrested. Or arrested, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, on. And, um, mm. so he came to Philadelphia um, in 1883. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Philadelphia in 1883 was the big thriving port city. It was post Civil War. Um, it was booming with banking, the railroad business, and shipping, manufacturing, and uh, also there were, you know, many, many Im European immigrants coming in. Mm -hmm. And there was a sizable German community here. But, uh, you know, there had been a German community here ever since William Penn. 1700s, yes. too, and the Millers well, on Mill Creek. And but, um, Theobald Harsh went to um, up to Callahill Street where there was a family from Nerdingham uh, called the Rumps. And Charles Rump had started a leather goods company and it later became, the, it was famous for making wallets and purses and so on. Mm -hmm. And he stayed with them, um, but probably only briefly because he soon moved out to Lower Marion to Libertyville. Which is part of Narberth today on Montgomery well, Avenue. Libertyville it was really a little village surrounding, close to the, um, the General Wayne Inn, which had mm -hmm. been there since pre-revolutionary mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. and, but it still functioned as an as a, uh, overnight, you know, mm -hmm. like a motel. Right. Thing. Um, right. And they served hot meals and so on, mm -hmm. but it also served as like the clearinghouse for local gossip and mm -hmm. business news mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And he um, probably went right there and stayed there and um, met a man who lived across the street who had a blacksmith shop. Um, because this is the 1880s, the, the cargoes and things were being hauled along Lancaster Pike by um, by wagons, by horses, mm -hmm. and um, blacksmith shop was part of um, keeping the horses shoed and mm -hmm. the, fixing the wheels of the wagons mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. And uh, just up the hill from the um, the uh, well, it was right next to the old Marion Meeting House. Mm -hmm. and, but in back of that was a horse racing. Um, um, what do you call it? Track. A, a track, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. where they had harness racing. Right. And they had a great um, big hotel building there, and the, um, the affluent um, people of the main line were, would go there to show off their horses and um, mm -hmm. find a rain. To but, but his German experience with horses was appropriate. Exactly, and this is why he b found himself at home in this community. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, the d moneyed families of Philadelphia were d buying up old Welsh Quaker farms and turning them into kind of estate houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he found um, a mm -hmm. lucrative business in doing landscaping. Mm -hmm. And that's how he got established okay. in Lower Marion. Mm -hmm. um, and then well, let me see. Where are we? Did he know other people in, in Lower Marion at that time? Well, one of the uh, other persons he met right away was Luther Parsons. Mm -hmm. And Luther Parsons was a, a fixture in in Narbeth for years. He lived to, well into his 90s. Mm -hmm. and so on. But Luther Parsons at that time had a blacksmith shop and a, and a carriage shop down in Ballackinwood. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have a picture of it. Um, mm -hmm. At and Montgomery he, and Parsons Avenue. Yeah, and you, he's in w one of these people lined up in front of the... Right. The... Um, blacksmith shop. Blacksmith shop. Right. So, he even has a street named after him, Parsons Avenue. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, he was like your grandfather. He became an entrepreneur and he built houses, twin houses, up that street. And he occupied one of those houses. Oh, really? But he was into real estate. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. that's how he got my father, <laughs> grandfather interested in that. Well, uh, now tell me, uh, you know, we got to keep on moving here. Yeah. We got the Belmont Racetrack, yeah. which well, was over. Um, all right. About okay. this, about um, 
1890, um, he, my grandfather was successful enough that he wrote to his sister and her husband and urged them to come over, uh, which they did. And they brought along a, a young 21-year-old mm -hmm. woman. Just who by was coincidence. By coincidence, but she was, <laughs> she was a cousin, a distant cousin uh -huh. of, of this um, Harsh family. And a beautiful girl. And within a year, um, my grandfather and Joanna Meyer were married. And um, they rented a house in Narberth, which is, as it turns out, the oldest house in Narberth. Mm -hmm. On Shady and, Lane. On Shady Lane. Right. I hope we're going to have Still it. exists. Um, mm -hmm. And they rented that um, house from the the owners. And was the, that uh, Hagee? Did you mention Hagee? Yes, I think it was the Hagee yeah, family. That's interesting. And, but, uh, you know, um, Ted, that the kitchen wing of that house is an original log cabin oh. that goes back to the first settler in, in Lower Marion. Oh, wow. It was a, Catherine Jones. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the Quakers that mm -hmm, came mm -hmm. here. Her, now, uh, they're renting, and they started a family. And they started a family, and within a very short time, um, a matter of um, eight years or so, they had four children. Um, my mother was the oldest. Um, she was born in 1893, and um, Helen, and then William Frederick Harsh, and then Frederick Harsh, okay. um, the, the four of them, and um, and they're still in this rental property. They were p in that rental property, mm -hmm. and about that time, um, Elm, the station stop on the Pennsylvania Railroad, mm -hmm. was being the area around that was being developed. Um, the owner of it was um, Joseph Price. I think it was Joseph Price. Joseph. Ed, we've got to take a little break, but we'll be right back with Ed Lewis uh, talking about the Harsh family. <laughs> 